Good morning, everybody, and it's time to dive into more upcoming rookie linebackers. Yes, just because we signed Bobby Wagner yesterday does not change the fact that we're going to need to draft a linebacker in all likelihood, and today we're going to start taking a look at the guys who I think are likely to go on day three. Again, you never know where somebody's really going to go, especially when you get down to these guys outside of the top 100. Even outside of the top 50, it can be hard. But my prediction would be that these guys all go in that range. The uh, I, I think these guys, I'll put it to you this way. The three guys I go over in this video, they have a chance to sneak into late day two, I believe. But I think more likely at this point, they're going to be early day three picks. Let's start with Owen Popoe of Auburn, the Auburn Tigers, 22 years old. Very fun player, and he had a very fun combine, which really got his, uh, some attention for him. Um, undersized, not a very big player, not a very long player, but he tested very well. His 4.3940 was one of the best we've seen from a linebacker recently. Good 10-yard split, he jumped well, and he had 29 bench press reps, which was really good for a linebacker in this class. So, Sports Illustrated is the one big board that has him in the top 100 right now. Everyone else basically has him somewhere around the 5th. Uh, the, dra um, the Draft Network has him in the, uh, excuse me, this is a typo, that should be database. Yeah, the database has him going in a, in the late, late fourth. And I'll tell you, I would be pretty happy spending a fourth round pick on Owen Popoe. He really only has one year that matters, like the 2021 season he didn't play that much. 2022, played in 12 games, gave you 91 tackles, including three for a loss, two sacks, three passes defensed, and two forced fumbles. And that is basically the main tape that he's bringing to bear right now. So the positives about Popoe are pretty simple. He was the defensive play caller for the Auburn defense, and he handled that responsibility well. He was a leader. He's His speed shows up in the games. He's got great sideline-to-sideline -side range. He's fast and athletic. He was a five-star recruit coming out of high school. He never became a superstar in college like expected, but he he has that ability back there in his back pocket that may come out one day. It might just happen in the NFL instead. Um, he's excellent in zone coverage. If you want to drop him back into zones, he has a great understanding, and he has a great uh, instinct for jumping routes and uh, getting his hand on the balls. Um, he has the physical attributes to develop block shedding ability as well. And he's a hard worker, so there's definitely some very positive traits here. Now, that being said, at the end of the day, he's not going to be able to completely get around the fact that he is undersized. And with an undersized linebacker comes some difficulty doing things like navigating through traffic. Um, when he's trying to navigate through traffic, he can get caught up in the wash and get pushed out of the play. Offensive linemen can kind of dominate him, which you would expect because he is so much smaller than pretty much every offensive lineman he'll ever run into. Um, as of right now, he doesn't have great block shedding ability, even though I think that he can develop in that area. And he does miss a fair few tackles as of right now. So there is stuff to work on here. This is another one of those linebackers that I talk about sometimes. This, to me, is the wave of the future. You want linebackers that are fast and can cover and maybe give you a little bit as a blitzer and yeah, they're not going to be as good in run defense, but it's going to be on you to give the linebacker a really good defensive line to keep him clean so he can handle his business without having offensive linemen come up in his lap. So this guy was a combine superstar. Wouldn't shock me if he rocketed up to day two. I still think he's going to be an early day three guy. And I think that I would be willing to take him in that area. I would definitely make him a prime target in the fifth round, which is where a lot of big boards have him. Wouldn't mind picking him up in the fourth. Honestly, maybe I wouldn't even hate picking up picking him up really late in day two. Um, next up, we have Henry Toto Toto, a guy who was very interesting to me, but I've kind of fallen off the wagon a little bit lately just because he didn't test very well, and that has me a little bit concerned. But... I mean, he played at Alabama for many years. He was very productive there. You can't deny that he's playing good competition down there in Alabama. And there is definitely still some stuff to like. 22 years old, uh, another undersized linebacker, relatively speaking. He's a little bit longer than Papoe, got bigger hands. 
it's just when you're only 227 pounds, I'm expecting a better 40 time than 462. To me, this is not very good. Um, he jumped less than his, his broad jump was less than 10 feet too. His 32 inch vert, not great. His 20 yard shuttle was good, I guess, but I don't know. He, I wasn't that impressed with the combine that turned me off him a little bit. The big boards are a lot of the big boards still have him going in the top 100. I will admit that he may still go in the top 100. But I feel like this combine combined with the, I feel like the energy is shifting against him. Like to me, PFF might actually have their finger on the pulse here when they have him as a fifth round prospect. But the other ones all kind of have him in the third round, except for the draft network, they have him in the second round and the database has him going in the third. But I think he goes in the fourth or fifth personally. So obviously, like I said, two really productive years at Alabama. Uh, a lot of plays made in the backfield, a lot of tackles made overall, played in a lot of games, so there's definitely appeal there. He's a high IQ player. He has good linebacker instincts of knowing where the play is going to go and understanding where to be. He's got range. Like, I know I said he was kind of slow at the combine, and he was. 4.62 is not a very good time, but he does play sideline to sideline for sure. For sure. He's proven that he can play well in a 4-3 or a 3-4. He can also line up inside, outside. He's lined up, I think, at slot corner a little bit here. And he's done all these things at a fairly good level. So any kind of defense you try to put Toho Toho in, it's probably going to work. He's also good in coverage, man and zone, I believe, or at least um, relatively good at man and zone. Um, no linebacker is going to be amazing at it, but as far as linebackers go, I think he's well above average. He was a leader for the Alabama defense. <clears throat> so I don't want to completely forget about the things that I like about Toe Toe just because of a bad combine. But that bad combine still exists. When you're a smaller linebacker, I want you to be running a little bit faster. That makes me wonder, how are you going to look against NFL running backs, NFL tight ends? Are you going to be able to keep up with them? He does struggle a little bit in run support sometimes, I think, just because he'll get caught up in the wash. Um, it's not terrible or anything. He does rack up the tackles like nobody's business, but I do think he can get caught up in the wash a little bit. When he's sent on the blitz, a running back can sometimes kind of just beat him on the rep. And if an offensive lineman gets in his lap, it, it's kind of GG for him. It's game over. And there have been some questions by scouts about whether or not he has the mean streak to excel at linebacker in the NFL. So overall... I think that the positives outweigh the negatives with Toho Toho. I wouldn't hate taking him late in day two. And I'm personally hoping that he'll be there in the fourth and maybe we can pick him up there. That's my hope. So Toho Toho, I, I hope he falls to the fourth. And then I'd be very open to bringing him in. Uh, last guy for this video is DeMarvin Overshone. This is to me the last linebacker who has a chance to creep into day two. And a lot of the big boards have him going day two. Uh, I don't think he had a very good combine, so I feel like he's going to slip, but we'll see. He's uh, 23 years old, and I think he's going to turn 24 a couple weeks into the season. So he's an older prospect. Uh, kind of tall, but also not particularly big. Decent-sized arms, though. Ran a 4.5640, which is kind of underwhelming to me when he's a 229-pounder. Um... Broad jump was good. Bench press was really weak, though, and it's not the end of the world. He's a linebacker, but you should be able to do more than 15 bench press reps, you would think, right? Anyway, a lot of the big boards have him at the bottom of round three. A couple have him in the round five area. Overall, the aggregate says round uh, three, but I think he's going to slip. Um, he's been pretty productive the last two years for that pretty good Texas defense last year, and especially almost 100 tackles, 10 for loss, four sacks, five passes defensed. Um, Overshone is a guy who started his uh, career as a safety, and it shows up in his coverage ability. And again, that's one thing I'm really prioritizing here. I want linebackers that can cover. You put him in zone coverage, he looks really good. You put him in man coverage, he can hold up no problem. You put him against tight ends and running backs, he can keep up. He's pretty good in that area. He hits hard. He's a good athlete for his size. Um, again, he's not huge or anything, but he's pretty good athletically in terms of like changing direction, his agility. He's rangy. He's constantly finding himself around the football. And he showed a talent, especially last year, for shooting gaps and beating blockers that way. 
But again, when you're talking about an undersized linebacker, you run into this problem a lot, which is not great against the run sometimes because once the blocker gets on him, he's just kind of out of the play. That's the problem with a lot of these smaller linebackers. It's a weakness that I'm willing to live with, but if you're going to get somebody like DeMarvin Overshone, DeMarvian Overshone, or really a lot of the linebackers I've talked about in this draft, you better be ready to keep them clean with the defensive line. That's why I say you better bring a nose tackle in as well. Um, but overall, uh, he's not a great tackler. I think that's a fair strike against him as well. That's just something he's going to have to improve at. And you're going to have to use him in a very versatile way. You're going to have to line him up all over the place in order for him to have success. If you just line him up in the box all the time, he's not going to be able to do the stuff that makes him really interesting. <clears throat> so I think that his coverage skills alone make him intriguing. I wouldn't hate picking him in the late third, but if he's there in day three, I'm definitely all over that. So I'm open to a late third round pick on here uh, on Overshone, but if he's available in the fourth or even later, which I think may happen, yeah, I'm all over that. I'm pretty excited about that. I'll live with the weaknesses of him as a prospect, and I will definitely say, hey, I will find a way to make this work. I'll build my defensive line in such a way that it works. I'll I'll keep him clean. That That's basically the goal here. And, you know, we've gone over a lot of linebackers over the last couple days, and that's the key, key with a lot of them. A lot of them are undersized. Trenton Simpson, all the way down to Owen Popoe, all the way down to DeMarvian Overshone, and um, God, so many of these guys that we looked at, they're that kind of linebacker. Keep them clean and you're going to have success. But you let the offensive linemen get into their lap, you've got a problem. All right, that's my video. Another video coming later today. Other videos coming later today as well. See you guys later. Go Hawks.